Now, to start this report, I'll have to put this chart up to give you a fair idea of what was going on over the last 2,500 years. As you can see, the chart starts with 900 BC. It's about that time that Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, took over the kingship and retained two tribes in Jerusalem. About that time also, Jeroboam was called back from Egypt. He was an exiled general out of the Solomon army. He is attributed to inaugurating what is now called the sin of Israel, and that was to take on a counterfeit worshipping system, the worshipping system of the Queen of Heavens and the Son of God. The Queen of Heavens then, Ishtar Ashtar, or, and the Son of God, then Tammuz, now Jesus. This counterfeit worship system was set up by Jeroboam, and it carried all the way through to the Talmud, which we'll see at 450 BC, and it'll show you that the, the name of Yahweh God was taken out of the mouth of the people because of their wickedness. When you're looking at 721 BC, you realize 10 tribes were completely and totally taken captive by Syria. And when that happened, you realize that Israel no longer existed. Coming up to 65586 group there, we're looking at a group of people that had by now been following the false doctrines taught to them by um, priests, rabbis, which were teaching error. They were teaching false doctrine. As a matter of fact, you're going to see in the text that we're about to read that, um, that Yahweh said to Jeremiah, tell these people that I will no longer hear their prayers and no longer talk, don't let them uh, pray to me because I will turn my back on them. And it is at this stage that Yahweh no longer regarded these people as his people, which is, as I said before, this is the first group of Israel totally rejected by Yahweh. They were, in 586, they were exiled into Babylon. And it's out of Babylon, and those usurped the positions of uh, priests and uh, fake rabbis, that they concocted the oral law or what is known as the Talmud today. And that is an illegal document because Yahweh said, don't add to my words. And you'll get those instructions in Deuteronomy chapter 4. There's more on it in Jeremiah 27, Jeremiah 29, and Jeremiah 44. As a matter of fact, in Jeremiah 44, that is where Yahweh said to Jeremiah, I will no longer let them speak my name, Yahweh. You'll see Israel and Judah there are totally rejected by, by Yahweh. You will get details of that in Ezekiel chapters 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 and in Jeremiah 7, 9, 14, 23 and as I said 44. So the group that call themselves Israel here, of course, you will see they are not Israel. This is the beginning of the Pharisees, the Sadducees and the Sanhedrin which they are going to uh, reproduce again. And all the way through now to the year 2000, we have a group of people that are not Israel. Now let's pick up some of the verses in the Bible, in the Old Testament, to tell you exactly what Yahweh's words are concerning these people who call themselves Israel. I might add, as you're going to find out in this report, the people that came in 1948 back to the land of Israel and called themselves Israel, that is a fake. You know, what we've been reading about is the end of those people who were called Israel. We're talking about the first group called Israel. The reason why I'm telling you the first group called Israel is because you're going to see there's a second group called Israel. But before we go there, let's have a look at a few other warnings. There were numerous warnings and then there were numerous punishments to try and get the people 
to give up their idolatry, their wickedness, their sinful ways. And if you want to know what wickedness or sin is, it's disobedience to the Creator God. It's going against His law and His ordinances, which He gave to the people to give to the world. Let me share something else with you from Jeremiah. And don't forget, this is also in the 4th century BC. And this is also before they were finally exiled to Babylon. But it also will bring out the truth that they had been listening to fake rabbis, false rabbis, false teachings, and they were not about to take any correction. Hear these words from Yahweh. I'm in Jeremiah 7, verse 3 on. Thus says Yahweh, Master of Legions, God of Israel, Improve your ways and your deeds, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Do not trust the false statements. These are the false statements that have been given to them by the false rabbis. They were not speaking on behalf of Yahweh. They were giving a load of false doctrines to the people. They were saying, the sanctuary of Yahweh, the sanctuary of Yahweh, the sanctuary of Yahweh, are they? Only if you truly improve your ways and your deeds, if you truly do justice between man and his fellow, do not oppress a stranger, orphan or widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and do not go after the gods of your fathers. God of your fathers, to do your own harm. Then I will cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I did give to your forefathers forever and ever. Behold, though you trust in false statements that are of no use, can one steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incenses to Baal, go after the other gods that you never knew. Now we're talking about what is necessary to be as part of the people of Yahweh. And then come and stand before me in this temple upon which my name is proclaimed and say, we are saved. So when there's evidence, you can see that the people believe in their hearts that they belong to Yahweh, the Creator God. But listen to what it goes on here to say from Yahweh. So they will come into the temple upon which my name is proclaimed and say, we are saved in order to continue committing all of these abominations. Has this temple upon which my name is proclaimed become a cave of criminals in your eyes? Moreover, behold, I have seen it, says Yahweh. For go to my shrine that is in Shiloh, where I caused my name to dwell there at first, and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of the people of Israel. So now, since you do all these deeds, the word of Yahweh, and I have spoken to you, speaking repeatedly to you through the prophets, speaking repeatedly to you, but you have not listened. I have called out to you, but you did not respond. I shall do to this temple upon which my name is proclaimed, upon which you place your trust, and to the place that I have given to you and to your fathers, as I did to Shiloh. I shall cast you from my presence, as I cast out all of your brethren, 
out of the seed of Ephraim. And you, Jeremiah, do not pray for these people. Do not speak up for them with a cry and a prayer. And do not entreat me, Yahweh says, for I will not listen to you. Do you not see what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The sons gather wood, the fathers kindle a fire, the women knead dough to make pastries and cakes in honour of the Queen of Heaven. You might find as we do the research on this, that's the hot cross buns, which are in the Catholic Church and the Christian Church today. You make pastries and cakes in honour of the Queen of Heaven and to pour out libations to the gods of others in order to provoke me. Is it me they are provoking, the word of Yahweh? Is it not themselves bringing shame upon themselves? Therefore, thus says Yahweh, Elohim, Behold, my anger and wrath will be poured out on this place. My anger and wrath will be poured out upon the people and upon the animals, upon the trees of the field and upon the fruits of the earth, it shall burn and will not be extinguished. Thus says Yahweh, Master of Legions, God of Israel, add your burnt offerings to your peace offerings and eat their meat, for I did not speak with your forefathers, nor did I command them on the day that I took them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt or peace offerings. Rather, it was only this thing that I commanded them, saying, Hearken to my voice, that I will give your God, and you will be my people, and you will go on the entire way that I command you, so that it will be well for you. But they did not listen to my words. And they did not incline their ear, but followed their own counsels, their own visions of their evil heart. They went backwards, not forward, from the day your forefathers left the land of Egypt until this day. I sent to you all of my servants and prophets daily, rising early, sending them forth to you, but they would not listen to me and they would not incline their ears. They stiffened their neck and became worse than what their forefathers were. You will tell them all these things, but they will not listen to you, Jeremiah. You will call out to them, but they will not answer you. Say out to them. This is what he's saying to Jeremiah to tell the people. Say unto them, This is a nation that would not listen to the voice of Yahweh, it's God. And they would not accept rebuke or correction. Faith is lost. It is detached from their speech. Tear out your hair and throw it away. Proclaim lament from the hilltops. Yahweh has rejected and forsaken the generations of of his wrath. For the children, Israel, Judah, have done what is evil in my eyes. The word of Yahweh, they have placed their abominations in the temple upon which my name is proclaimed, and they have contaminated. They have built the high places of Topheth that are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in fire, which I had not commanded, and I had not entered it in my mind. Therefore, the be behold, the days are coming. This is in line with what Ezekiel chapters 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 gave you. 
The days are coming, the word of Yahweh, when it will no longer be called the Topheth and the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, but the Valley of Killing. For they will bury in Topheth until there is no more room to bury the people. The corpses of this people will become food for the birds of the heavens and the animals of the earth, and none will make them afraid. I will eliminate from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the sound of joy and the sound of gladness, the sound of groom and the sound of the bride, for the land will become ruined. As you can see, the group of Israel that is referred to here is not the same group that will be redeemed called Israel. This is the group of Israel which you can see by the evidence. It is totally rejected by Yahweh their God. And I am in 9 verse 2. They draw their tongues, but their bow is falsehood. Not for good faith have they grown strong in the land, for they go forth from evil to evil. But me, they do not know me. The word of Yahweh. Let each man beware of his fellow. Do not trust any kin. For every kinsman acts perversely and every acquaintance mongers slander. Each man mocks his fellow and they do not speak the truth. They train their tongues to speak falsehood, striving to be iniquitous. Your dwelling is amid deceit because of their deceit. They refuse to know me, says Yahweh. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, Master of Legions, Behold, I shall purge them and I shall test them. For what else can I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is like a drawn arrow. They speak deceit. With their mouth one speaks peace with his fellow, but inside of him he lays an ambush. Shall I not punish them for these things, says Yahweh? From a nation such as this shall my soul not exact vengeance. For the mountains I will raise my voice in weeping and wailing, and for the pastures of the wilderness in dirge, for they are parched without a person passing by. And they will not hear the sound of cattle, for the, from the birds of heaven to an animal they have wandered off and gone. I shall make Jerusalem a heap of rubble. Jerusalem will be a serpent's lair. The cities of Judah I shall make a wasteland without any inhabitants. Woe is a wise man who will understand this. Who is he to whom the mouth of Yahweh speaks that he may explain this to the people? For what reason did the land perish and become parched like the desert without a passerby? I might add, this hasn't yet happened yet. But it is going to happen as you read with me in Ezekiel chapters 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. But Yahweh has said, because of their forsaking the Torah, that I put before them, and moreover they did not heed my voice to follow it, they followed the visions of their own heart. They followed Balaam, as their fathers had taught them. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, Master of Legions, God of Israel, Behold, I am feeding these people wormwood and giving them poisonous water to drink. I shall scatter them amongst the nations that neither they nor their fathers ever knew. I shall send the sword after them 
until I've annihilated them. As you can see, this group of people called Israel are not the redeemed group in the later prophecies. Let's go to Jeremiah 10.10 10 and read those few verses because it's referring to also what Yahweh gave to the prophet Daniel, which we'll take a quick look at. But have a look at these words with me. Yahweh God is true. He is the living God and the eternal king. From his anger, the earth quakes and nations throughout the earth cannot bear his wrath. So tell them this. The gods who did not make the heavens and the earth shall vanish from the earth and from under these heavens. Remember those words. The gods, all of them. Jesus, Allah, Krishna, Buddha, Hindu, whichever one you want. They're all going to vanish. But Yahweh made the earth with his might. He established the world with his wisdom and with his understanding he spread out the heavens. At the sound of his placement of the multitude of the water in the heavens, he raised clouds from the end of the earth. He makes lightning bolts from the rain and brings forth wind from his treasuries. Every man is bereft of wisdom. Every smith is shamed by his graven image. For his molten idol is false, and there is no life in them. They are vanity, the work of deception. When they are dealt with, they shall perish. Unlike these is the portion of Jacob, for he is the molder of everything, and Israel is the tribe that is his heritage. His name is Yahweh. Master of Legions, gather your possessions from the land, you who live under this siege. For thus says Yahweh, Behold, this time I am slinging out the dwellers of the land. I shall beleaguer them so that they may find their own punishment. Woe is me for my disaster, my wound is acute. I said to myself, It is but an armour, I can bear it. But my tent has been plundered and all my cords have been snapped. My sons have left me and are no more. There is no longer anyone to pitch my tent, to set up my curtains. For the shepherds, rabbis, have been foolish and they did not seek out Yahweh. Therefore, they did not succeed and all their flock was being dispersed. The news of a report, behold, it comes, and a resounding noise from the land of the north, which will make the cities of Judah a wasteland, again showing you that Jerusalem is going to be totally destroyed. I might add, no Jews, no Christians are telling the people that Yahweh is going to destroy Jerusalem, and they will quote what happened in with Titus from the Roman Empire in 70 AD, etc. Jerusalem wasn't total wasted then. What we're talking about is reduced to ashes, a heap of rubble. That is what he's going to do to Jerusalem. I know, Yahweh, that a man's path is not his own doing, nor can a man who walks direct his own steps. Chastise me, Yahweh, but with justice, not with your anger, lest you diminish me. Pour out your wrath upon the nations in the world that know you not, and upon the families that do not call out your name. You've got the Christian world thinking that Jesus is the creator God. That is false. You've got the Jewish world believing that their God is Hashem. Hashem is not 
the name of the king of the universe. And I'll show you a report soon where millions of people, World War II, were praying to Yahweh. Not, they were, I'm sorry, they were praying to Hashem, not Yahweh. And that is the reason why Yahweh didn't hear their prayers. Pour out the wrath on the nations that don't know you. Yahweh will consume all of these people, annihilate them, and devastate his abode. And I said that that is also in line with Daniel chapter 2. We know that it is in line with that because I will read from you Daniel 2, verse 28. It says, but there is a God in heaven who reveals the secrets. This is spoken to Nebuchadnezzar who had a dream of an image with a head of gold, chest of silver, thighs of brass, legs of iron. And of course, all of the Christian theologians and documentaries, all of the Jewish theologians and commentaries will tell you that that was referring to Babylon, then Medo-Persia, then Greece, and Rome and so forth. No, it wasn't. It was referring to the religious cultures and religious kingdoms of all of those sovereign countries. It goes on here, it says, The God of heaven revealed the secret, and he has informed the king of Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the last days. So you see, if you looked at this image where it was crumbled to pieces back in the time of Nebuchadnezzar, something like 600 BC, 500 BC, that was not the last days. I want to tell you about it, and I'll read it from verse 34. As you watch, the stone was hewn out without hands. Now, if a stone was hewn out without hands, it's by the hands of Yahweh, the Creator God. This stone struck the statue on its feet of iron and earthenware, and it crumbled them. Then they crumbled together, the iron, the earthenware, the copper, the silver, and the gold. Hear that? The stone representing the mountain that fills the whole earth which is the religious culture of what Yahweh will have, destroys all of the other gods. They were crumbled together. They became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away and no trace was found of them. And the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Well, how does a stone become a mountain to fill the whole earth? Obviously, that is going to be Yahweh's kingdom, his religion, his culture. It wipes out all of the others. Well, this is a reading, a Bible reading, starting from Ezekiel. And I'm going to start from chapter 5, verse 5. Thus says Yahweh, Elohim, this is Jerusalem among the nations have I placed her, and all around her are countries. She's exchanged my laws for wickedness more than the nations did, and exchanged my decrees more than the countries that are around her. For they spurned my laws and did not follow my decrees. Therefore thus says Yahweh, Elohim, because you readied yourself for sin more than the nations around you, you did not follow my decrees, you did not fulfill my laws, you did not even act according to the laws of the nations around you. Therefore thus says Yahweh, Behold, I too am against you, 
and I will execute judgments in your midst before the eyes of the nations. I will deal, I will do with you what I have never done, and the likes of which I will never do again because of your abominations. Therefore, fathers will eat their sons in your midst, and sons will eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments amongst you and scatter your entire remnant to every direction. Therefore, as I live, the word of Yahweh, I swear that because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your detestations and all of your abominations, also I will diminish you. My eye will have no pity, and I too will show no compassion. One third of you will die by the plague and be consumed by famine in your midst. One third of you will fall all around you by the sword. And one third I will scatter to every nation in the world. And I will unsheath the sword after them. My anger will be spent and I will put my wrath to rest through punishing them and so I will find consolation. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. I have spoken in my zeal when I spend my wrath upon them. I will make you into a ruin, a disgrace amongst the nations that are around you because the eyes of before the eyes of every passerby. Jerusalem will be a disgrace and a taunt, a lesson and an astonishment to the nations that are around you when I execute judgments on you in anger. In wrath and with wrathful rebuke, I am Yahweh, I have spoken. When I dispatch against them the evil arrows of famine that are for destruction, which I will dispatch to destroy you. Then I will intensify the famine upon you and I will break your staff of bread. I will send against you famine and harmful beasts. They will bereave you and plague and bloodshed will pass among you and I will bring the sword against you. I am Yahweh, I have spoken. Chapter six. The word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of man, direct your face towards the mountains of Israel. Prophesy to them and say, Mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh to the mountains and to the hills, to the ravines and to the valleys, Behold, I am bringing a sword against you, and I will destroy your high places. Desolate will your altars be, and broken will your sun images be, and I will cast down your slain before your idols. I will set the corpses of the children of Israel before their idols, and I will scatter your bones around your altars. In all your habitations the cities will be destroyed, and the high places made desolate, so that your altars be destroyed and desolate, your idols broken and nullified, your sun god images cut down, and your deeds eradicated. Corpses will fall in your midst, and you will know then that I am Yahweh. But I will leave a remnant so that you will have some survivors from the sword amongst the nations when you become scattered amongst the lands and your survivors will remember me amongst the nations where they were taken captive, how I was anguished by this straying of heart that turned away from me and by their eyes that strayed after their idols. Then they will be disgusted with themselves for the evils they did through all of their abominations then they will know that I am Yahweh, that I did not speak in vain about doing this evil on them. Thus says Yahweh, 
clap your hands and stamp with your feet and say, Alas, because of all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, who will fall by the sword, by the famine and by the plague. He who is far from battlefield will die by the plague. He who is near will fall by the sword. And he that remains and is besieged will die by the famine. And I will spend my wrath upon them. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. When their corpses will be among their idols around the altars and on every high hill and all the mountain tops and under every leafy tree and under the thick elm, the place where they offered the savour of pleasing aroma to all their idols, and I will stretch out my hand over them and lay the land waste and desolate. From the wilderness of Dibla throughout all the habitations, then they will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 7 The word of Yahweh came to me, saying, You, son of man, thus said the Lord Yahweh, Those who dwell upon the sword of Israel, an end. The end has come upon the four corners of the land. Now, the end is upon you. And I will send my anger against you, and I will judge you according to your ways. And I will place upon you punishment for all your abominations. My eye will not spare you, and I will not have any compassion. For I will place upon you punishment for your ways and punishment for your abominations will be in your midst, then you will know I am Yahweh. The dawn has come against you, O dwellers of the land. The time has come and the day of tumult is near. And it is not the joyous shout of mountains. Now speedily I will pour my wrath upon you and I will spend my anger against you. And I will judge you according to your ways and I will place you for punishment of your abominations. And my I will not spare and I will not have any compassion on you. I will place upon you punishment for your ways, punishment for your abominations, which will be in your midst, then you will know that I am Yahweh. Behold the day, behold it comes, the dawn has gone forth, the rather sprouted fruit, wantonness has blossomed. Violence has arisen to become a rather wickedness. There is not among them, nor among their multitude, nor among their offspring, anyone among them who yearns for me. More from Ezekiel. I'll continue Ezekiel chapter 7 from verse 12. The time has come. The day has arrived. Let the buyer not be glad, nor the seller mourn, for fury is upon her entire multitude. For the seller, he will not return to that which was sold as long as his soul is alive. For there was a prophetic vision for her entire multitude, it will not return. Each man, his very being, remains with his iniquity. They will not fortify themselves. They will blow the horn and prepare everything, but no one will go to war. For my fury is upon them all. My fury is upon them all and her multitude. The sword is outside, the plague and the famine are inside. Whoever is in the field will die by the sword, and whoever is in the city, famine and plague will consume them. Their fugitives will flee and they will be in the mountains. 
all of them money like pigeons of the valleys, each man in his iniquity, all hands will be weak and all knees will melt like water. They will gird themselves in sackcloth and terror will cover them on every face will be shame and on all their heads baldness. They will throw their silver in the streets and their gold will become repulsive. For their silver and their gold will be unable to rescue them on the day of Yahweh's fury. They will not satisfy their souls and they will not fill their stomachs. For it was a stumbling block of their iniquity. The beauty of his ornament he has set for majesty, yet they made their abominable and detestable images within it. Therefore, I have made it into a repulsive thing for them. Yahweh speaking. And I will give it into the land of strangers for plunder and unto the wicked of the earth for spoils and then they will profane it. I will turn my face away from them and they will profane the place where I am hidden. And into it will come lawless people to profane it. Make the chain for the land is full of blood guilt and the city is full of injustice. So I will bring the wickedest nations and they will inherit their houses and I will put an end to the pride of the mighty and their holy places will be profaned. A cutting off is coming. They will seek peace but there will be no peace. Disaster will come upon disaster and report will be upon report in vain will they seek visions from the prophet. You might recall that there was a bunch of rabbis, prophets that set themselves up and usurped themselves as prophets in Babylon when this was written. This was written approximately 550 BC. Those particular prophets those who set themselves up as Kohanim, priests. Yahweh said, they speak in my name, but I did not send them. The king will mourn and the leader will be clothed with consternation and the hand of the people of the land will be confounded. I will act with them according to their ways and by the judgments they deserve, I will judge them. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Ezekiel chapter 9. And this is posted for the future. He then called within my earshot within a loud voice, saying, Bring near those appointed over the city. These were angels each with his weapon of destruction in his hand. And behold, six men were coming from the direction of the upper gate that faces northward, each man with his sledgehammer in his hand, but one man amongst them was clothed in linen with a scribe's slate on his loins. More in Ezekiel 9, starting from verse 3. Then the glory of God of Israel ascended from the top of the cherub, on which it had been, going to the threshold of the temple, and he called out to the man clothed in linen, on whose loins was the scribe's slate. Yahweh said to him, Pass throughout the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. Put a sign on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry, those who moan for all of the abominations that are done within it. Then he said to those within my earshot, Pass through the city behind and smite, kill them. Let not your eye not spare and do not have compassion. Slay old men, young men and maidens, children and women. You shall slay to utter destruction. 
but do not approach any of the men upon whom is the sign, and begin at my sanctuary, the synagogues, the churches. So they began with the elders who were before the temple. He said to them, Defile the temple, and fill the courtyard with the slain, go forth. So they went forth, and they smote all in the city. And it was a while they were smiting Ezekiel the prophet. I remained and fell on my face. I cried out and said, Alas, Yahweh, are you destroying the entire remnant of Israel as you, as you pour out your wrath on Jerusalem? As you can see, this is Yahweh's day of wrath and vengeance. Then he said to me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is very, very great. The land has been filled with bloodshed and the city has been filled with injustice. The land has been filled with bloodshed and the city with the injustice. For they have said, Yahweh has forsaken this land. Yahweh doesn't see what we're doing. So I too, my eye will not spare nor will I have compassion. I have placed their way upon their own head. Just then the man clothed the linen with a slate upon his loins, brought back an answer, saying, I have done according to all that you have commanded me. This is more on the same subject, but it's from Jeremiah. It's written probably in the vicinity of 80 to 100 years after the Ezekiel prophecy. And I'm reading a couple of things from chapter 14 of Jeremiah, from verse 11, or verse 10. Thus says Yahweh concerning this people, indeed they like to move about. They did not spare their legs. So Yahweh found them undesirable. Now he will recall their iniquity and he will punish them for their evil transgressions. Yahweh said to me, Do not pray for the beneficiaries on behalf of these people. If they fast, I will not listen to their cause. If they sacrifice a burnt offering or meal offering, I will not accept them. For I am going to annihilate them by the sword, by famine and by pestilence. Then I said, Alas, Yahweh, behold, the false prophets, false rabbis, say to them, You will not see a sword and famine will not befall you, for I will present you a true peace in this place. But Yahweh said to me, these prophets, rabbis, prophesy falsehood in my name. I did not send them nor command them to speak to them. A false vision, divination, emptiness, and the deceptions of their heart is what they are prophesying to you. Therefore, thus says Yahweh concerning the prophets, the rabbis, who prophesy in my name, though I did not send them, yet they say, no sword and famine will never ever visit this land. Those prophets shall perish by the sword and by famine, and the people to whom they prophesy will be strewn about in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and there will be no one to bury them. They their wives, their sons and daughters. For I will have poured out their own evil upon them. Tell them this thing. My eyes drip tears night and day and do not stop, for the virgin daughter of my people is broken by a great disaster, a very sickening blow. If I go out to the field, behold, there are slain of the sword and 
If I enter the city, behold, there are those ill from famine, for the prophets, priests, rabbis alike have given them falsehood throughout the land, for they did not know the word of Yahweh. Now there's one thing, one very important factor that comes through when we read all these accounts. We don't mess around with Yahweh, the Creator God. Everybody that ridiculed him or his name, everybody that made fun of him, everybody that disregarded that he existed, somewhere down the track, they paid dearly. And we're talking about a God, Yahweh God, that has punished and punished and punished the people to try and wake them up and they took no notice. We're talking about Yahweh God that warned the people, warned the people, warned the people and they took no notice. Then we're talking about a, um, a God here, Yahweh God, who said, all right, I've had enough of them. I'm going to turn my back on them and I'm going to annihilate them and I'm going to cause them misery, famine, plagues, disease, until they are totally annihilated. Now we've got a lot of theologians running around the world. Now look, I am not a rabbi and I am not a pastor. I don't belong to any Jewish synagogue and I, I don't belong to any church. I just read the old book. And you can do the same thing. It's when I read the verses in there, which some today that you have seen, Yahweh says it's in the last days that you will understand this. Or it's at the time of the end that you will find out what we're talking about. And of course we are in the time of the end. Now, even though every one of the kings of Israel was wicked, didn't do the right thing, were unfaithful to Yahweh the Creator God, he went to war and won the wars for them. He protected them. He looked after them. Now this is a slap in the face for people who think there's got to be a Jesus there for forgiveness. Because we're talking about dozens of stories where Yahweh God forgave them. And not only forgave them, then stretched out his hand to support them and protect them against the enemy. We're talking about a God, Yahweh God, here that killed 185,000 of the Assyrian army when they came down against Jerusalem. Why? Because the people prayed using the name Yahweh and they prayed to Yahweh for help. And there he came, killed 185,000 of the enemy. And we come all the way through, we've had 2,500 years of counterfeit Jews as I've just explained here, and as you've read yourself. You might find this difficult to conclude, but there's a lot more that you can read if you pick up the book, and it'll prove the conclusions are correct. The people that came to the land, today they call Israel, they were people that came out of Ukraine, Poland, Russia, and they were people that were subjected to unbelievable horror by the pogroms, by the German army. And if you want to know whether or not I'm telling the right facts that they were calling on a prayer to some God called Hashem, I've got a book in my hand. And this is a book which has, it's one of the history books. It's written by Martin Gilbert. If you Google that name, you'll find that he's responsible for some 20 editions of historical accounts of the terrible atrocities that happened. You're going to also find in this book that the rabbis, who were they praying to? Hashem. Were they praying to Yahweh? No, they weren't. And you've learnt in the text that Yahweh said, my people will call me by my name and my people will address me by my name. As a matter of fact, it's in the first three of the Ten Commandments. Now, of course, you've got that twisted around where the rabbis will say today that, oh, well, we, we don't mention his name because that could, uh, that could be blasphemous. Sorry. That's not what Yahweh said all the way through the book. 
Now, not only did they take on this new name, which came out of the Talmud, you've got to realize that the Talmud, coming out of Babylon, that's where you got all the names of the days, the weeks, the months, and their names after pagan idols. Monday, after the moon god. Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday after Woden. Thursday after Thor, Friday after Frigga, Saturday after Saturn, Sun, Sunday after the Sun God. I mean, everything that we've got today is riddled with pagan idolatry. Where did it come from? Out of Babylon. Who by? These bunch of fake rabbis, fake priests, who put together the they put together the Talmud, Mishnah and the Gemara all illegal documents. And these poor people that had been led down this dry gully for 2,500 years and we get to uh, we get to the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th century, they were still praying to Hashem. I was going to read some of these terrible accounts to you. I'll just find a couple and I'll give you an idea of the horror that these people did put up with. So who are these Jews? Russia, Poland, Ukraine, Germany. I read a little excerpt here and it's in uh, this book by Gilbert. I'm in page 38, 39 of those who want to Google it. It says here, Rabbi Dick, he was the chief rabbi in Berlin. How many rabbis, he said, there was only one. That's me. He goes on to say this. The Jews of Germany today, there are 60,000 in the whole country now, half of whom have come from the Soviet Union over the last 10 years, and there are 10,000 Jews here in Berlin. And again, half of them are recent immigrants from Russia, Almost all of them without any smattering of Jewishness. Did they know Yahweh, the Creator God? No. Do they consider themselves Jewish? When they need something, then I, as a rabbi, I have to receive them. It goes on further to say, with the only one synagogue there at the time, all religious groups are part of it, including Orthodox, ultra-Orthodox, Reform, Liberal. Now, and of course, then you had the Lubavitch, the Hasidic, and these different sects of Jews. I asked a Reform rabbi once, I said, but you don't believe in creation. He said, oh, no. No, God only made the first cell. Then it all evolved. I said, oh, wait a minute. You then disregard the entire story of creation that's in your own Torah. He said, yes, we do. He said, so what he regarded as a fairy tale, fable, yes. I asked one question to him. I said, all right then, let's take just one issue about creation. You know anything about birds and fish and animals? Oh, yes. Yeah. I said, well, would you agree that they're all divided up into, say, three categories? Omnivore, carnivore and herbivore. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. I said, well, what happened to uh, the so-called evolution and the uh, natural selection when, take a parrot, take a white cockatoo, it's a herbivore. And it only lives, say, even good ones live 80, 90 years. So it's not going to live for a million years for, for uh, natural selection. And if you were to put a plate of meat in front of it, would it recognise it as food? Of course not. It's a herbivore. It eats seed. So it's starved to death. So how can you tack on a million years in your natural selection for these things to evolve? You see, they have gone so far away from Yahweh, the Creator God. He went on to say, and we're uh, up to about page 44, and it's explaining how many Jews were around the countryside. 34,000 Lithuania. 200,000 uh, pre-war Lithuania. They'd all be murdered. In Ukraine, 2.9 million. And the second largest for the general government, German administered central Poland, 2.2 million. And the third largest in Germany, 
and Hungary, 742,000. France, 700,000. And so on it goes. You add them all up together and you've got about 9 million. And when you realise that these were rounded up like drowned rats and killed, it bears out the testimony that you just read that Yahweh said, I will turn my back on them until they are totally annihilated. Now that would mean that that's going on now. We're in the last days, this is the time of the end. And the Jews, it says, in Jerusalem, the whole thing is going to be smashed down to rubble. It goes in this report here about how the Germans brought in Zyklon B poison gas to get rid of all the people. I mean, it's pretty, it's, it's just a, a, a horror. And you can't read this book without crying a dozen times. But it does record going back to the 14th and the 15th century. In one case, it's talking about Rabbi Lou, L-E-W. He came to Prague in 1573. He started a yeshiva for the Talmudic Academy. So what were they teaching? The same nonsense that Yahweh rejected them for 2,000 years prior. It also goes on to say about this Rabbi Lou, it is said that he made a figure of clay and then breathed life into it and it became one of the golems, I'll spell that G-O-L-E-M-S, that are in the so-called Jewish legend. I mean, when you read some of these things and you realise that they are nothing to do with Yahweh, the Creator God, whatsoever. You know, it's hard to uh, come to grips with this when Yahweh is regarded as a God of mercy. Because if I would cry a dozen times when I read this book, he must have been crying. This is in August 1943. August 1943, there arrived in the ghetto 1,260 children. They had been brought there by Biolock Stock Ghetto. There were a few child survivors of the destruction of that ghetto, but they were kept in strict isolation. On the 5th of October in 43, the Germans said that they were going to be exchanged for prisoners of war in Allied hands, and that the exchange would take place in Switzerland. But they were all taken to Auschwitz, and there they were murdered. 1,260 children. Can you believe that? This is about Warsaw in 1942. I'll just read a little snippet. I noticed an unpleasant stench that seemed to have come from decomposing bodies mixed with horse manure. This may have been an illusion, but it was a fact. We passed through a small grove of trees and emerged in front of a loud, sobbing, reeking, camp of death. It was on a flat plain, about a square mile, surrounded by all sides with formidable nine foot barbed wire. We've got 850 detention camps in America. They've been built in Australia and they've got nine foot razor wire. Why? goes on to say, at intervals about 15 yards, guards were standing holding rifles with fixed bayonets ready to use. Around the outside of the fence, the militiamen circulated on constant patrol. The camp itself contained a few small sheds and barracks. The rest of the area was completely covered by dense, pulsating, throbbing, noisy, human being mass, starved, 
stinking, gestulating, insane human beings in constant agitated motion. Through them, forcing their path if necessary with their rifle butts, walked the German police and the militiamen. They walked in silence, their faces bored and indifferent. And they just looked like shepherds bringing the flock to the market. 210,000 of these poor souls were herded into stock cars. A stock car could only hold comfortably 20 people. They pushed them in until there was 45, 50 people in a stock car. No one had room to sit kneel down or lay down. They were all standing up and they were then locked in these stock cars to go to the gas chambers. The floor of these stock cars had been spread with slate lime. When you put water on lime, it gives off a gas. They hosed in these stock cars so that the lime had water added to it when the poor people stood there it was a two and a half hour three hour journey and it goes on to tell you that none of them were alive when they arrived they were fumigated by the fumes from the slate lime and then other jews were nominated to pull out these bodies still standing straight and burn them. Two thousand Jews were assembled at Vladova in 1942. The deportation was to send them to Sobibor. The Gestapo asked where was the rabbi. Ackerman pointed him out hoping thereby to save the rabbi's life. The Gestapo at once shot Ackerman and the rabbi was also shot. Ackerman's action and his death were an example in Ringelblum because they prayed to Kiddush Hashem, the sanctification of the name of God through martyrdom. Now you understand why Yahweh said, I don't want to hear their prayers, I will turn my face from them. A little girl was clinging to her dad as they were pushed up the ramp onto the stock cars. An SS man shot the dad. The little girl ran out, looked at the SS officer and said, look at my face. You will see my face in your dreams. And with that, she was shot on the spot. There were so many warnings that Yahweh gave them. He says, Do not let your prophets who are in your midst and your magicians delude you. Do not listen to your dreamers whom you have appointed to dream and preach to you. For it is falsehood that they prophesy to you. They preach to you in my name. I did not send them. Take no notice of them, the word of Yahweh. For thus says Yahweh, They are teaching you falsehood. All these terrible millions of people that were just killed, slaughtered, because their leaders, their rabbis, their priests taught them nonsense. And Yahweh goes on to say, they did not know my word. Now about that second group that I mentioned to you, yes, there is a second group called Israel, but you need to understand what the word Israel means. And it was a word that was given to, a name that was given to Jacob. Why? Because he overcame sin. The word Israel is a word describing the people that have overcome sin, are faithful to Yahweh. Not this mob of people that were deluded and deceived, and I'll read what he says. Behold the storm of Yahweh, a rage shall go forth, a tempest shall seek rest. It will rest upon the head of the wicked. 
Yahweh's burning wrath will not recede until he has accomplished it and until he has upheld the plans of his heart. And it will be in the end of days that you will be able to understand it. And here we are in the end of days. At that time, the word of Yahweh, I will be a God for all the families of Israel and they will be a people for me. There's the beginning of the redemption of a second group called Israel, which he calls forth from all the four corners of the world. And he says, I will be not known as the God who pulled the Israel people out of Egypt. I will be known as Yahweh the God that pulled all the people from all over the world to again be my people. They will be my servants. There's something that I've got to share with you. It's about evil. Now, if you want to understand what we're talking about, there is evil forces, satanic forces, Luciferian forces that are allowed to do the bidding of Yahweh, the Creator God. And we'll be talking about what's happening today under the United Nations, under NATO. Let me read to you the United Nations Mediation Leader's statement. His name is Chinmoy. Quote, The United Nations is the chosen instrument of God. Ask the question, which God? The United Nations religion is a combination of, and here they are, New Age mysticism, pantheism, Aboriginal animism, atheism, communism, socialism, Luciferian occultism, Christian, Judaism, Islam, Taoism, Buddhism and Hinduism. Did you notice that both Christian and Jews are mentioned in there as an instrument of God? Which God? The Luciferian God. Goes on to say, no one will enter the new world order unless he or she will make a pledge to worship Lucifer and take the Luciferian initiation. That's who you have ruling the earth today. But Yahweh says, I will annihilate all nations of this earth. You might ask the question, who is the power, the satanic power, the Luciferian powers behind both all religions and all governments? And I read to you from the secret society's secret covenant. It was in item 42 and item 60 that I gave you in a previous report. Quote, we will always hide the divine truth from them, that we are all one. All religions are under our control. Now I met a lot of rabbis and pastors of the religions who are members of the Freemasons. Goes on to say this they must never know. Item 60. Their minds will be bound by the beliefs, the beliefs we have established from time immemorial. And that is correct. The secret societies go all the way back to Babylon and Egypt. The beliefs that we have established from time immemorial, false religions and corrupted doctrines. But if they ever find out that they are our equal, we shall perish then. This they must never know. And just a little note to finish. Yahweh fills their minds. He uses evil men to fulfill his decrees of punishment on the world. This is all going to happen very shortly because we're in the last days. We are at the end of days now. So how does all this end? Well, I'll have to finish up and I'll just give you a final statement. And I'm going to talk about Jeremiah 29, 30 and 31, which refers to the New Covenant. And of course, you've got the Christians and the Jews thinking that the New Covenant is partly um, materialized because of 1948 and the so-called those people who have asserted themselves as Israel today. 
This report has shown you that most of those people were secular. That means they were not part of Yahweh's people. This report shows you that they prayed to the wrong God. This report shows you that Yahweh said that he had given them up and that they would be annihilated by pestilence, by plagues and by the sword, which is machine guns. I'll just read this to finalize. Behold, the days are coming, the word of Yahweh, when I will seal a new covenant with Israel and Judah not like the covenant I sealed with their forefathers in the day that I took them out of Egypt. In other words, that covenant is gone. Those people are gone. That first group called Israel are not there anymore. And any group that calls himself Israel today is fake, is a counterfeit. The only people that can be called Israel will be faithful and servants to Yahweh. They abrogated my laws and they and my covenant, although I became their master, the word of Yahweh, for this is the new covenant that I will seal with Israel after those days of this time of trouble. The word of Yahweh. I will place my law within them and I will write it into their heart. I will be a God for them and they will be a people for me. They will no longer teach each man or his fellow, each man his brothers, saying, No, Yahweh, for all of them will know me, from the smallest to the greatest, the word of Yahweh. And I will forgive their iniquity, and they will, I will not recall their sin. So there is a few people running around the world today that are faithful to Yahweh. He's going to round them up and call them back. This is a report that I know is going to shock both Christians and Jews. But it's a report that I feel I had to produce for you. We are coming into a time of trouble such as never was. It's written in the good book. And the deceit, the lies, the wars, the mayhem, the murder is going to get worse. All I can say is go back to the book, read the story from Yahweh yourself, get an understanding of how to know him, and he does make a promise. He says, you call on me with all your heart, I will hear you, and I will answer your prayers.